Uh, Alina Leminin with her talk, Spatial Temporal Dynamics of Sentence Processing, Are Distinct Neural Populations Responsible for Morphological and Morphosyntactic Parsing? Yeah. Check the microphone, yes, working. So good morning, everyone. I uh, decided to just simplify my title, so I'm going to talk about um, morphology in context and also to complement and maybe um, to talk about from different perspective but on the similar issue as Anastasia talked um, yesterday and so um, to start so we know that language is combinatorial and uh, words many words in many languages are composed of smaller units called morphemes and I uh, probably don't have to explain to you what that means. Uh, but anyways, for instance, many words in many languages are complex in such a way um, that um, some parts of them contain meaning of their own. For instance, um, inflection, it specifies grammatical relations between words, uh, like cats. I always have cat examples because I have cats and I love them. so. And um, so you see in, that's in English, there are cats, and then also in Finnish. Uh, Finnish, which is the language I'm going to talk about, has um, 14 or 16 um, different active cases. And also Russian is very um, morphologically complex. However, inflected words are rarely presented in isolation. And uh, it's often so that adjacent words influence each other and those elements must agree in, uh, for instance, in number, in the case, in the gender, which uh, is not in Finnish, but in Russian, as you can see. Uh, I gave small cats a little bit of food and I wrote examples in Finnish and Russian. So uh, uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, what happens when we have um, um, word level parsing, like kissoile, and what happens when we have um, adjacent elements like uh, small cats because they have to agree in, uh, in case and number. So what happens in the brain when we process this, these um, elements. So just to briefly summarize uh, what happens in the brain when we process inflection. Um, so, as uh, Anastasia said yesterday also, uh, it typically elicits left frontal um, temporal network, activated especially for regular inflections. But because I'm particularly interested in uh, temporal processing, in uh, addition to spatial processing, um, I've um, noticed that electrophysiological processing of regular inflection, such as jumped, has elicited in, in many languages, such as English and uh, Spanish and also uh, German particularly, uh, the biphasic uh, left anterior negativity and P600 effects. And they have been suggested to reflect particularly combinatorial processing. It's not always so. Uh, Finnish is very regular and um, we have also observed uh, N400 effects which have been um, sort of um, suggested to um, reflect lexical processing, but it's a sort of a debate of what's going on. So that's why we're still continuing um, studying these issues. Um, on the syntax level, it is also uh, been shown that it elicits a uh, left, particularly left front to temple activation for a syntax. And, um, at the ERP or temporal level, it is also elicited often um, by phasic LAN and P600 effects, especially when uh, these um, violations or agreement has been on the close of phrasal level in between uh, elements that close to each other. Um, and, um, and also in Finnish. And what has been an uh, interesting motivation for the study I'm going to talk about is uh, a recent study by Newman et al. have um, noticed that there is a partial <coughs> activation for inflection and a morphosyntactic uh, word order. So grammar, um, different 
sort of uh, parts of grammar, at least it's somewhat um, overlapping, but um, differential pattern of activation. So uh, we wanted to see, our goal was to, um, to identify the neural mechanisms of word level uh, inflection and also phrase level inflection. And also inflected words and agreement have rarely been manipulated in the same study. That's why it was our aim. So we wanted to see also uh, whether they elicit same neural generators. And seen in uh, front temple networks and on the scalp as uh, LAN P600 effects. And this was our prediction. And one of the reasons to do this was also we wanted to more carefully localize the absurd DRP effects because, uh, for instance, only few studies reported the sources of P600 effects even now. And also there are only a couple of studies uh, which have been able to localize the left anterior negativity. Um, and how we did this? We uh, used, uh, frequently used in ERP and MEG research, um, violation paradigm. So this means rhythm uh, of kuiven. So it, um, kuiven is um, um, a group rendered of the dry um, deserts, through the dry deserts. And this is a correct condition. And uh, then we had, uh, morphological condition, which is uh, we sort of manipulated stem, allomorph, and suffix combination. There were different types of those, but they violate sort of uh, morphophonology and also um, they should be poikia, but uh, we had such a uh, different combination. This is a, probably in Finnish the only way of um, violating word level inflection because uh, there is no strict regular versus irregular um, pattern in Finnish, um, at least to our view. And then whereas, um, and the, all the stimuli were of the same structure, it's just uh, the subject have no, had no way of knowing before the target word appeared what happened, whether it's uh, correct or incorrect. And then we had agreement violations, so Kuivin was plural, and um, the Avik was, uh, for instance, in the singular, and all of the words were inflected too. And then we had a combined violation in order to see what happens when we have both agreement, uh, case agreement, and um, allomorph violations, so both of them to mix up our subjects. And yeah, here's the English. Uh, English translation, so we had also 50% plural and singular, everything was um, quite balanced and matched. And uh, we had also, we wanted to include only uh, syntactic cases, because in previous study there also have been uh, different kinds of cases, semantic also, so we wanted to filter that out. And uh, in order to match uh, correct and incorrect words, we had also fillers. And uh, 16 participants reading simple sentences, and the words presented word by word, and the fourth word was the target always. So here's the procedure, and occasionally judging acceptability. So we wanted to make this task as, um, even though including violations, but as uh, natural as possible. Uh, whereas previous studies have um, um, asked um, to judge acceptability after each um, each um, sentence. And we recorded EEG and MEG simultaneously to localize our ERP effects. And, um, and we use data analysis methods, ERPs, and also we um, modeled our um, EEG MEG sources by using S. Loretta with the BESA uh, software and we used, uh, in addition to normal ANOVA, we used a new um, new way an of analyzing ERPs and also um, MEG signals source modeling by um, using permutation tests. And we didn't have a priori um, sort of assumption on where 
where in our sensors we expect our um, significances to, to appear. So we, you have to always, um, the downside is that you can also always um, compare only two conditions, but it's always corrected for multiple comparisons. And what we saw is that for morphosyntactic condition, even in, if in sort of normal reading, we see the um, morphosyntactic, yeah, morphosyntactic, uh, we see uh, the left anterior negativity appearing, even though it's smaller than in uh, studies with uh, normal uh, grammatical judge or justification or, and then we do not see in morphological condition the same effect as for morphosyntax and combined condition has elicited a larger uh, left anterior negativity. And then I wanted to also show you what it looked like on the central electrodes before going to statistics. And here you also see some kind of uh, activation, larger activation to morphosyntactic, again, um, condition. But then a larger uh, negativity for morphological condition and also combined condition elicits again a larger negativity. So what do statistics say? The statistics show that morphosyntactic condition elicited, yes, indeed, left anterior negativity, which was a significant, but interestingly, also something like N per 100 effect, which was uh, puzzling at some point, but um, with a deeper digging into statistics, we show that it, it seems so <coughs> there are two clusters of the negativity. So um, usually the studies have seen only LAN, but we see both LAN and N400, which uh, perhaps shows that um, uh, because the old words were also uh, inflected, so there would be a double, uh, a double sort of um, activation, a parsing, uh, at the world level plus um, morphosyntactic analysis of uh, adjective and noun, which was interesting to me. Whereas when we had only morphological violation, we do not see exactly the same pattern. And when we have combine, it's like all, all of the scalp is negative. Yeah, so this was the earlier uh, processing and then we see the the later condition, which is all of the uh, violations have elicited P600, which is interesting. Also, in turn into statistics, they look uh, approximately the same. So uh, it could be that um, in the later stages, the violations are repaired and integrated, as uh, been suggested by many other um, previous work. However, we wanted to see also where do these effects come from. And from morphological condition, we see that our N400-like negativity comes from, um, this is the difference between morphological and correct. So for morphological activated a larger, larger front uh, anterior temporal um, activation in the right hemisphere, whereas Morphosyntax is more uh, left inferior frontal and uh, it's um, the activation which is strongest in shown in the axis. Whereas in this earlier um, window we see that combined condition is something like larger and elicits more cl significant clusters. So it's, uh, it's not exactly the sum of the two uh, activations, but it's more like a larger network, something additional going on. And uh, interestingly, because we all, in all conditions, we saw P600, so you would expect that they would all uh, elicit the maybe uh, same sources coming, uh, the same mechanism. Uh, however, as I'm going to show all the it's, uh, of course, it's quite uh, wide spread because it's still a long elastic negativity, but 
and it's a messy picture somehow, but what we see is that some of them are overlapping, but we see some effects are left lateralized and some effects for some reason are, even though uh, both hemisphere activated, the strongest significance comes from the uh, right hemisphere. Whereas um, um, more syntactic condition elicited, um, again, uh, several clusters. So there's uh, a lot of si simultaneous, even maybe P600s going on, something that no one has done before. Just so it's interesting, even though it looks on the scalp that it's the same, uh, same type of effect. It seems to come from uh, different parts of the brain coming out uh, simultaneously. So to summarize briefly, I've talked a lot that stem allomorph and subject mismatch elicited more uh, of a N400 uh, negativity um, which uh, was localized in um, anterior temporal areas and uh, even though it was bilateral by itself but uh, as compared to correct condition it was more on the right and um, whereas number and case agreement violation elicited the uh, LAN plus the N400, and it was more prominent in the left frontal areas. And uh, all conditions, P600 with a different pattern, perhaps that integration recombination effects uh, with their modulation according to uh, how difficult it is to integrate. And um, so a frontal networks perhaps um, reflect combinatorial hierarchies in the language. Uh, so it seems that, and to some extent, even though in the later um, time frame there are um, similar and overlapping, but in the earlier stage, they're at least partially governed by the distinct um, neural mechanisms. So I wanted to thank our group and also Biomag Lab for letting me year after year uh, record the date there. And uh, it's our group in Siberia in Helsinki, led by Teja Kuel. So thank you for your attention. Please grill me now. Thanks a lot. And we have plenty of time for questions. In just a second, I'm going to find the microphone. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, oh, you're here. Yeah. Um, thanks for an interesting talk. It shows again how important it is to look at the temporal resolution of these events um, and just to show the differentiation between the processes, which are on average, a temporal average scale would not be visible. Um, uh, I have a question about, first of all, can I clarify when, was, when did you time lock the um, analysis too. Yeah, this was a visual study, so uh, we time locked to the onset of the target word. Uh, which so the onset one. of the second word. Yeah. So not the word with the violation itself. Oh, n not the, the word with violation. Yeah, because um, yeah, always the violation word or non-violation or combined. Yeah. Yeah. Did you look at inside the violation word itself? Sort of time locking it on the to the onset of the via of the suffix. That would have been nice, but uh, if we had auditory. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's an uh, interesting um, sort of um, an idea. Or how how would you do that? <laughs> I would like to know. Maybe somebody would tell. Except um, if you if you. Um, time lock or record uh, eye tracking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's something, yeah, that's something we're currently doing, but not that them. Yeah, so you, uh, you presented words kind of in a line. They appeared one by one, or they flashed? They flashed word by word, which is a standard procedure okay. that happened. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so the subject had no way of knowing before the target sort of the violated word appeared. What was, the context was always the same for yeah, so, so only when the violation came, 
he or she knew whether it was um, violated um, in accordance with the previous context on, or whether there was a stem plus allomorph. So before that, it was always exactly right, everything, nothing's uh, special about that than some, something. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of a retrospective analysis mm -hmm. rather yeah. than prediction violation. Yeah. Um, so, and you know the, you, you have the triggers, if you, well, if you had the triggers for the violated word, no, I, I, I understand in it makes suffix. sense, it's a violation yeah. only in the, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, the eye tracking would have probably been, been an interesting way yeah. of, of looking it's at it. A, it's a very complex analysis still, but yeah. yeah, it's something, a tool to consider if you have a possibility. But if I, if I, um, if this was an, um, an auditory study, which I have done plenty, I would expect even, because even though here we saw N400, but mm -hmm. we've seen in auditory study also the big N400, but when we time locked to the onset of the suffix, we saw a small LAM there too. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's uh, in the morphological condition also hidden by the, the huge axis mm -hmm. uh, and semantic negativity. So mm -hmm. that's something maybe to, uh, for a future study to or something yeah. that you do in the auditory, so it's nice to... Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. So I have another little question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how do you... <laughs> so what do you think about your later effects of the P600? Uh, the similarity of those between the two conditions that you've shown? Yeah, there was um, a similarity, but also differences on the, on the hemispheres. On the hemispheres, yes. Well, what do you think about that? I'd like to uh, know. I think the P600... My speculation mm -hmm. is because it's uh, in the earpiece, it's such huge and long lasting way. So uh, mm -hmm. it would be nice to, somebody has done it probably. I think it's in a Spanish group, but uh, not, in the, on the, not in the source level of, they have separated. The, the speculation mm -hmm. is also about N400. They are composed of several different com subcomponents. Okay. So I would think that it wouldn't be nice to somehow um, to this try to manipulate and take it to the smaller slices and to, to the sea because mm -hmm. it's a, a large network of uh, mm -hmm. areas, areas activated mm -hmm. at the same time. So probably there's a lot of uh, processes going on. And maybe if mm -hmm. you have a sort of a violation like a morphosyntax, mm -hmm. syntax, you have to integrate more in mm -hmm. And especially in a combined condition where like half of the head was. Mm -hmm. And of course, these are um, average uh, sources on the standard frames. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, this is very interesting. So, l last one, I promise. <laughs> um, so, y the effects of the morphological violations, right? So, with the syntactic effects, it's easy for me to kind of think about it because you would expect a certain class of word after the suffix, right? Yeah. So if you can please go back to your examples, because um, I, I don't speak Finnish very unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, it's hard to, to. for me to pass. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, yeah. that's it. So um, yeah, for the for the morpho, morpho syn, well, the syntactic conditions, mm -hmm. the agreement violation, yeah. right? It's kind of easy to to know what you're expecting. So you, in a way, you have an expectation violation because you expect a word of a certain class, mm. right? So, but for the morphophonological violation, I would have thought that all the effects that you would see to do with morphophonology, you would see time locked to the onset of the suffix, mm. and not to, to the onset of the second word. So, how do you disassociate between the effects of kind of retrospect retrieval because you don't really, as far as I understand, you don't really look at the morphology in this case. You, um, you mean um, what's, what kind of violation or what kind of process here in the in So if you time lock all of your, all of your analysis to the second word, right? Mm -hmm. The morpho, for, for morphological or morphophonological violation wouldn't be on the onset of the second word, it would be present, the processing of this violation would be present inside the first word, right? You mean like this word here? Yeah. So you would kind of uh, already have an expectation of what's going on. I'm not sure if that's No, it's just that, that when you time lock to the second word, the lapi, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Did you time lock to Lappi? Oh. To, to this one. Oh, no, not to Lappi. To Arabic one. Okay, yeah. then, then it makes sense. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 This one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so you did uh, time lock time lock there. Okay, sorry. To the then. target word. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. I just thought you time lock to the second one looking to the effects yeah, of the first one. Yeah, the second word is like we but is the first word. And I right. Yeah. Now it makes Always sense. Always on the target word. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So I hope that clarifies. So. Yeah. And we can discuss more. Yeah. So any other? There were a lot of questions. Good questions. I just have a um, comprehension check uh, question about um, uh, different localization of your N400 for uh, suffix violations and uh, in, um, agreement violations. So what is the um, underlying story, you think? Uh, uh, suffix violation uh, leads to uh, Lexical access problems. Uh, you. I think. Uh, I mean, Minna has, uh, has also been doing a lot of visual studies <laughs> and um, with correct, uh, correctly inflected words, and they have always and with MEG mm -hmm. and EEG, and we have done that also. We have um, usually seen N four hundred. Where? Uh, my question is localization in this case. N400, yes, of yes. course, but you, you mentioned two different uh, sources of N100 depending on uh, whether it was a violation in agreement or in stem allomorphy. That's what I'm interested in. Right. Yeah. So let me try to repeat again. Uh, in your conclusions, you been, uh, or at some point, you said that you uh, have identified N400 for suffix violations yeah. and for agreement violations, but yeah. the sources were different. Yeah, the sources were. Um, yeah, now I see. The sources, I think, maybe um, what I have uh, thought that. Um, the agreement violations such may be salient and big, so it's uh, as compared to correct conditions. So this must be because there were two effects and the lung and M400, which we only saw in the scalp. So maybe it's less salient in the, and it's just bigger in the sources. So um, that's why one was pr uh, on the left and the other on the right. Maybe, but <laughs> but as you see, this is just. Uh, just what Loretta tells us. Okay, yeah. thank you. It would have been nice to see both, but...